Imagine you're a time traveler fooling around with your latest invention. You send yourself back in time to 1919. But as you step out of that machine, you trip over a lock. You get up a little bit embarrassed, hella dirty, and you decide, you know what, this trip isn't worth it. Before you hop back onto your time machine, let's go back to our time. But what you didn't know was that log you tripped on wasn't a log at all. In fact, it was the leg of a sleeping horse and you just broke its leg. And on top of that, it's the same sleeping horse that was supposed to take the chairman of the commission on the unification of pronunciation to a very important meeting that day where representatives all over China would announce that Mandarin would become the main language of the country. And so by tripping over that log, you've just changed history forever. You've created a world where Mandarin never existed. So what would a world where Mandarin never existed be like? To understand the weight behind our actions, your action, we have to first understand where Mandarin came from. Before Mandarin was a thing, the Chinese you'd hear in one region would be wildly different the moment you stepped into another region. There wasn't one single language that could be understood throughout the entire country, but a whole family of dialects. Think of it like how people in different cities will talk a little differently according to where they're from, but instead of, you know, a couple of words sounding a little funny, it was all of them. Now, obviously having such a divide in language as a country wasn't the best. So the leaders of China thought it would be easier if everyone in the country could understand each other better by creating a, what we call standard pronunciation. This would improve trade and government processes immensely. And so after the Republic of China was created, an official dialect was chosen. How did China choose which dialect to choose? I mean, why aren't Chinese people all speaking Cantonese, Shanghainese or Hokkien? as their universal language. Well, the decision was simple. Beijing, even back then, had been the capital of China, both officially and culturally. And so it made sense to make the national language based on what was being said in the most important city in the country. And so when we're speaking Mandarin today, we're really speaking a form of Beijing Hua. Now you may be thinking, okay, Sheldon, like people, you know, talk different dialects a little differently, big deal. I mean, don't they use the same writing system across China anyway? Aren't all Chinese dialects pretty similar? Well, that's not always the case because you see Chinese dialects are different from English. Whereas in English, if you hear someone from say the UK, I mean, that's a different accent. You can't understand what they're saying because they use similar words. But if we take another dialect of English, let's say for example, Patois, which is what they use in the Caribbean. Sure, it might sound a little bit different, but there are a lot of things that sound really similar to English. And as an English speaker, you find you can actually make out what they're saying. You can get the general idea. Everything gonna be iry. Because they use similar words, similar verbs, and they sound the same. But in Chinese dialects, not only do the same words sound completely different, people use entirely different phrases and expressions all together. Just take this for example, say you want to say, Good morning. In Mandarin, we say, or literally, good morning. In Cantonese, we would say, completely different characters. In Taiwanese Hokkien, they say, I, I'm gonna, I probably got this wrong completely, but it sounds completely different. In fact, those characters in Mandarin would be or in Cantonese. They sound completely different in Mandarin, Cantonese, and Hokkien. Now in Hainanese, they would say, or However, they'd say ha chou o. I probably got that so wrong, but you can see it's a completely different pronunciation. Like, oh, there's no way I'd hear that and think sounds like zao shang hao or sounds like zhou shang hao. So as you can see, even a simple good morning is completely different. Imagine how it would go if they were to have an entire conversation. Even the characters used can be different depending on the region. So now you can probably understand why it was so game changing to have a common dialect. I mean, even if we compare Cantonese and Mandarin, I mean, the sentence structure is entirely different. In Cantonese, to say I ate is ngo sik jiao fan. In Mandarin, it's wo chi le fan. Aside from the word fan and ngo, we're actually using entirely different words. But in fact, having a common language was key in turning China from what it was back then to the powerhouse it is today. I mean, just think about what our government would have been like if no one understood each other. They would have spent more time trying to translate than actually passing any bills. I mean, just imagine for a second, let's say you're an American and you're from California and you have a friend from Atlanta and you guys spoke entirely different languages. Now, just imagine on top of that, presidents had to communicate with Atlanta and California, but they all spoke different languages. Now, the president has to go through a translator to talk to Atlanta and to California. And imagine the president was from Florida, whereas Florida had its own language. How does that work? 
And so it would just be a long game of broken telephone and having that common language made it so that people from anywhere in China could communicate with each other. It built a sense of unity and cultural identity amongst the Chinese people. Now, obviously this change didn't happen overnight and people didn't just wake up one day and suddenly know how to speak an entirely different language. People learn Mandarin to talk to people from other regions as well as understand important news and rules from the government. As time went on slowly but surely, Mandarin became the official dialect of mainland China. It's the reason why even me as a Cantonese speaker, if I read the Cantonese news, everything is actually written in Mandarin set in structure. So I can read the characters and everything in Cantonese and I can understand it, but the sentence structure is not how it speak Cantonese, it's actually exactly how it speak Mandarin. So I always tell people if you're a Cantonese speaker who wants to improve your Cantonese, the best way is actually by learning Mandarin at the same time, because the only way to consume more formal Cantonese content is actually to be able to understand Mandarin sentence structure. And so if you're a Cantonese speaker and you want to do that, just click on the link down below. We've already helped a lot of students and hopefully we can help you. So why does it matter if Mandarin can exist? I mean, can't they just use their own dialects? Like, isn't that better for their culture anyway? Heck yeah, I'm, I'm Cantonese, I love Cantonese. Let's kill off Mandarin. Well, let's go back to our time machine and come back to present day. And let's see what you tripping over that horse did. You nasty, nasty person. When you came back, you realized that a lot of things have changed. And by a lot, I mean a lot. You messed up time, buddy. For starters, China isn't the global economic superpower that you used to know. Lack of proper communication between regions made it difficult for the country to actually get a head start on the latest technology and scientific advancements. Business deals take ages to process since everyone has to use translators to even understand a simple, how much is it? I mean, take for example, in Cantonese, how much is it is qin, in Mandarin is tian. completely different words. And that's why I'm talking business within the country. I mean, don't even think about international trade. I mean, education would be so different too. Like lessons, curriculums, and even national exams would have to be catered to each individual region. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to communicate out loud unless you all spoke the exact same dialect. Like imagine going from California to Atlanta and you have no idea what anyone's saying. And so all that makes the effort of talking to people outside of your region too much of a hassle. So you just stick to your own bubble of wherever you're from, Gongzhao, Wannam, wherever you're from, and you'd never really explore anywhere else. Now, of course, it's not all doom and gloom for China without Mandarin, because obviously, you know, regional dialects represent identity for a lot of people. Local arts, literature, and theater would thrive, and the cultural diversity in China would be so unique and colorful, with each region having their own unique customs, traditions, and even language. It would feel so much richer to travel each place knowing that it's it's so unique. Because even for me, as someone who speaks both Cantonese and Mandarin, I know that it's not the same. Like there's so many different expressions and so much beauty to Cantonese that it would be a shame if we lost that. And it's not just language, there's humor, comedy, traditions, like so many jokes that would be lost if we lost Cantonese. Like if you can't get those jokes back, there's so many jokes in Cantonese that don't exist in English, let alone Mandarin. One of the benefits of it would be, yes, you know, regional cultures would really thrive. And me coming as a Cantonese person, I mean, I would feel so much pride in that because I love my language and I love my culture. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword, right? On one hand, regions would have their own cultural identities instead of just being thrown into the melting pot of Chinese culture. I mean, think about it for a second, right? Like when you think of Europe, you think of, you know, French culture, English culture, British culture, you think of, you know, Slovakian culture, but you don't think of, you know, Europe as a single, single whole culture. But generally, when we think of Chinese culture, I mean, we don't really think of, you know, Yunnan culture, Shanghai culture. We don't think of like Guangzhou culture. We think of Chinese culture as like a whole conglomerate. And so would it be nice for each of those individual regions to have that culture they can call their own? Of course it would. But on the other hand, if there wasn't a common language, there wouldn't be a Chinese culture at all. I mean, you'd be proud of being from Fuzhou, from Guangzhou, from Shenzhen, but you wouldn't be proud of China being Chinese as a whole because you wouldn't be able to connect with others from your own country only with people from your region. And so it preserves cultural identity, being able to you know, have just your language be everything, but it can be a bit lonely. And so which is better, right? Having a unique regional identity or being part of a greater group. Should you go back in time again to stop past you from tripping on that strangely furry law? Now you think about it, the truth is there's no correct answer because it really comes down to individual values. Because if there was no Mandarin, we'd have a China that 
preserved its regional differences and autonomy, but we sacrificed national unity and global communication for it. Either way, let's both agree that we should probably have you chill on the time traveling for now because who knows what else you could mess up by traveling back in time.